Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our um, topic 3 of uh, PTR 2131 and today we'll actually cover a very important topic the loss of containment and uh, this is the first uh, lecture of the three uh, total three parts of uh, topic 3 so we'll actually uh, cover a wide range of um, a wide range of uh, safety risk and the loss control how we can actually control the loss of the containment uh, in this uh, lecture series so um, let's um, continue with some uh, definitions so what is the loss of containment so the loss of containment there are lots of uh, definitions you have but the uh, uh, we, in, a, in a broad uh, spectrum, we can say like an unplanned or uh, uncontrolled release of any material from primary containment. Uh, this this first line is very very important. The uh, unplanned and uncontrolled release of any material uh, from the primary containment. Remember that. Okay, this is a very important part that includes non-toxic or non-flammable materials and also contain like the toxic or flammable materials too okay uh, for the drilling operations uh, this for the I mean sp more specifically for the drilling operations but uh, for like I mean I mean general uh, uh, perspective an unplanned or uncontrolled release of any material from primary containment we can say the loss of primary containment okay and LOPC or loss of primary containment is a type of event okay so we'll actually learn all the definitions right what we have learned so what do you have learned unplanned uncontrolled primary containment so these are all jargons we have so let's learn what are those things let's learn about these terminologies unplanned Unplanned means like various fluids and gases uh, transferred in all direction uh, on an oil and gas installation. The problem occurs when the release or transfer was unintended. Uh, if anyone, uh, any, anyone's uh, happened or any, any, I mean, I mean, do you know any cases like someone actually put diesel in the gasoline? Well, it happened to one of my friend unfortunately so he actually uh, although like the nozzle don't fit but he actually somehow managed to put diesel in his car and that was totally totally unplanned and that led to a disaster okay so this is a uh, uh, one of the example of a unplanned or like I mean a spill a very common example a spillage is also unplanned right or uh, like I mean you have a coffee in your hand you're coming in the morning at the corridor to the going to the class hopefully very soon so what's happened to that that is also uh, like I mean if you spill the coffee on the floor while you were actually going to the classroom at the corridor that is also one unplanned uh, transfer okay so this is the uh, case of like the unplanned what is uncontrolled during the planned release okay for instance you are having a planned release or transfer the barriers in place to protect personal equipment and the environment may be different than those which are typically in place but still prevent loss of containment so this is the uh, literal definition of the uncontrolled transfer okay give you an example for instance uh, you actually went to the gas station to fill up the tank and what's happened uh, this is not unplanned you are actually you have actually planned to turn and you are actually putting gasoline in your tank but you didn't see like I mean uh, the tank is full 
and after the tank is full you know you have a you, you have a signal or something like yes the tank is full there's a clutch or notch stuff but you ignore that and you put more gas and then uh, the tank overfilled and spilled okay so that is an example of a uncontrolled release okay so uncontrolled release that means it was intended it was planned but it went beyond the control so something is actually overfilled and <clears throat> it actually spilled away okay now the primary containment what is the definition of the primary containment and if there is any primary containment so there should be something called secondary containment tertiary containment yes those actually presents we'll actually learn about it but before let's learn what is the primary containment okay so the primary containment is a vessel or a system okay which is designed and engineered to withstand force pressure chemical degradation which are associated with material contaminate contained within for instance you have coffee okay in a coffee cup so what is the primary containment of the coffee is your coffee cup okay the cup of the coffee that's the primary containment because this cup of the coffee designed to withstand force you can grab with your hand okay you can grab with your hand pressure and when you actually squeeze up still with withstand and chemical degradation right and it also the temperature also okay it called contained like all these thermodynamics properties that's uh, in one word we just said that chemical degradation but it also with that temperatures like transferring the temperature so all these actually contained by in I mean, contained uh, the coffee is actually hot coffee contained in a container in a that we call coffee cup so that is the primary containment of the coffee cup okay um, let's give you an example the egg so what would be the primary containment of the egg? The shell, right? Now, if there is any primary containment, as we said, so what would be the secondary containment? In case of egg, the case is the secondary containment, okay? Or for instance, for the coffee, for the coffee cup, okay? This is the coffee. You have the primary containment. The secondary containment could the lid on the top that would be your secondary containment so is there any tertiary containment yes you can okay you can ask for a double cup for the coffee or you can have a sleeve that is the secondary or tertiary containment so these are all what these are all layers this is these all actually we use just for the material the coffee okay so that's why this coffee cup is known as the primary containment this is the secondary containment the another coffee cup or uh, or the sleeve is a uh, tertiary containment so all are these layers okay so we call the whole system like this contained system is LOC or layer of containments all right so if this happen like the unplanned or uncontrolled release if the primary containment is bad or destroyed, then we'll have the uh, loss of the containment, okay? At any time, material in the question escapes past barrier, put a place to contain it. So, this is the loss. We don't want that. Now, we know about these definitions of uh, what is the primary containment and the layer of the containments okay now uh, what happens what is that what happens actually these uh, unintended release so let's uh, learn about that let's learn about hazard okay so if any thing happen any 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 uh, material actually escapes uh, which could be dangerous like flammable materials like gasoline this is hazardous we know that okay so what is actually hazard 
and what is risk so hazard is anything that could potentially harm okay the people the environment and the equipment and a hazard is a I'll give you this uh, uh, definition also this is uh, also a good definition so hazard is defined as a situation that has a potential to cause harm to human safety asset and the environment that would be the proper definition of the of the hazard okay so hazard is a type of like that situation okay and how a hazardous uh, situation can uh, can arise by by this by unplanned and uncontrolled release of a dangerous material okay like this like a shark okay unplanned and uncontrolled if it actually goes to a seabed then it is hazardous now what is risk actually so we know what is hazard hazard is a situation that can potentially cause harm okay now if you expose to this hazard like this guy in here okay this is a potential risk all right so this is the hazard and i know what he's thinking but he is in a very risky situation all right so what is risk the risk is the likelihood or the chance that a person will be harmed in a specific way uh, uh, if exposed to a specific hazard okay so this is the specific hazard the jaws anyone knows what is jaws Spielberg anyways so to estimate risk how, how we actually know he's in risk or she's in risk or the whole process is in risk I mean what is the what is risk anyway can we actually like quantify the risk can we know like i mean we can always say like i mean this is way riskier to do that based on what information we can actually say like this is risky or this is not risky like i mean uh driving is risky is it risky or like i mean is it riskier than driving in the snow or is it risky in driving in a highway or like in a normal alleyway what, what is the definition of that uh, how we can actually measure the risk so this is the thing to estimate or to quantify the risk we need both frequency and the consequence have to be defined that means what is this consequence or severity of the of the risk if it's exposed and what is the frequency of the risk Okay. For instance, uh, the frequency of incident at the snowy weather is higher than the normal weather. That means it is risky. And the consequence of the incident in uh, snowy weather or in the, in the icy or the snowy weather is higher than the normal environment. That means it is risky. In, in, uh, so we can actually come to the conclusion that driving in uh, in a snowy weather or in the blizzard is riskier okay um, than driving in the uh, normal weather so the risk is the combination of the frequency of an event and its consequence right so the risk increase if the frequency increase and the severity of the consequence that means we can actually say the risk is equal to frequency times consequence the magnitude of the consequence and the frequency of the event okay now wait a second oh you can understand like the frequency but what is event like what is that actually so we will actually learn um, more about these events like I mean what is actually the event and uh, what kind of consequence we are actually talking about so if we know about these then we can actually quantify the risk 
okay and if we know the risk then we can actually uh, prevent any kind of like uh, loss of containers now hazards and the risk as I said like before here risk is the exposure of the hazard okay and it got its own severity like for instance here this is the fire hazard fire is a hazardous substance okay now cooking in a controlled way is risky yes of course because it's a uh, uh, hazardous element to it actually working with but this is planned and controlled and staying in the containment okay so this is sort of like moderate risk actually okay but think about this one this is uncontrolled and uncontained like the it, it actually uh, unplanned uncontrolled and the contain actually going out okay with a dangerous substance so that means this is more higher risk actually involved so that's how we can make a scale of the of the risk like in such a way okay so the consequence of this event is you'll have a delicious food but the consequence of this one probably uh, you got to call the uh, fire truck all right so that's why it is more risky okay now the tools for identifying hazard and assessing the risk so we knew about like I mean the hazards and the risks. so how we can actually um, quantify it uh, we're actually we have actually talked about like I mean estimating or quantifying the risk how we can actually do that this is not like I mean something a uh, money or something that we can actually count like one two three four or something like that so um, uh, for for this reason we have to do a vigorous study and we have to use different tools in order to uh, uh, identify the hazard and assess the risk okay and how we can do that there are different types of tools in industry in order to uh, identify the risk, identify the hazard and the consequences and then assess the risk. So what are these? One, the number one and the most important and well known is the hazard, okay? Which means hazard and operability, operability study, okay? And there's a what if analysis, uh, FMEA, or uh, failure mode and effect analysis, FTA or fault tree analysis, ETA or event tree analysis. So these are all different types of tools of quantifying the risk. Now, um, let's uh, talk about haze up. So haze up or hazard and operability study is usually conducted by a group of personnel, a very experienced personnel in the type of process operation or the equipment. For instance, the, in the chemical industry, it's mostly like chemical engineers, uh, uh, safety engineers and the mechanical engineers. Uh, so uh, like the, from the maintenance, like the electrical engineers. So all these engineers combined, they make a team, a group, okay? And they conduct the haze up in the, in the industry and especially you can also do the haze up study in um, in uh, in the design uh, in the design uh, uh, stage of, of, of the industry okay so uh, typically haze up uh, occurs in three phases number one the first thing is like the hazard identification or has it this is a very important part of the haze up because to um, to know about the hazard, what types of hazard could be in there, the first thing you need to identify the hazard. And then you do the risk analysis, like, I mean, is that hazard we have identified uh, is really opposed to a threat or not? If it do not possess any threat, then we wouldn't uh, count it. Uh, we'll actually put it at the low risk zone, okay? But if it's more higher, then will also actually uh, put it in like the high risk zone and also will actually uh, check that the uh, frequency 
with the CVR ED2. So if the frequency is more higher, although its consequence is low, but still it can be uh, put at the uh, more risky area. So it all depends on what types of uh, analysis we're actually doing. So that's why we do the risk analysis. And when we have this information, on the risk analysis information, okay, then we can actually make a decision based on assessment and application of the control measures, okay? So, in the control measure, it will actually mitigate the uh, hazard, okay? So, it will actually mitigate the hazard. That's why we did the control measures. Hazard identification. Can you identify the hazard in here? What types of hazards could be, uh, could be in this case, in this uh, uh, scaffolding? Well, the first important thing of the scaffolding is the height. So we have to have a fall arrest, okay? So there is a hazard of the height. So what would be the consequence? Uh, if they do not have proper gear, so they can fall and they can um, be get injured and in worst case they can die. So that would be a bigger issue. So this is how we should actually identify the hazard, okay? Well, nothing to say about these folks. Uh, during the time of Great New York, we constructed lots of people who actually went in there, mostly from Newfoundland, actually, and to um, uh, to exposed in such a hazardous environment. So you can see the compare the pictures and see, like I mean, how the uh, by the change of time, how we actually change the definition of safety at that time they think like they're properly safe because they're sitting on the pillar and having lunch but now we can't i mean this is like unimaginable right so that's how we actually we do we did like the risk analysis then we took the control measures and that's the result of the control measures like all of them actually got the fall arrest and having proper PPE. They don't even have proper PPE, right? So the risk analysis step determines the risk considering the likelihood and the amount of damage to people, equipment, and the environment, right? Control measures. What is the control measure? Control measure is the final decision on whether uh, the current design or the operation should be accepted, what safety measures should be taken if the hazard been, I mean, uh, exposed, and if the risk is uh, unacceptable, and how much risk could be reduced by using the safety measures, okay? Um, this measure should either have lower accident frequency or mitigate the damage it could cause, okay? For instance, if you actually want to see the solar eclipse, which is totally fine, but only if you actually use this uh, X-ray shield, okay? If not, you are totally exposed to the hazard, the sun's UV and the ray could actually destroy your eye, okay? And this is the uh, control measure you should actually take. Now, task, the group task. I will actually give you, uh, this is for actually the live lecture session at the live lecture session we'll actually do this group activity so i'll actually um, um give you some um, some task and from there you would actually identify the hazard assess the risk and apply the control measures okay for instance um head giving a heads up like uh how about like walking in the rain okay what types of hazard you would actually exposed if you actually walk in the rain Okay, and what type of risk would be that and how we can actually uh, apply the control measures and make the decisions. So this is all about today's uh, lecture and today's lecture we actually give you the idea about the uh, loss of containment, lots of terminologies. At the next uh, lecture slides, you we'll, uh, will actually have more um, uh, more to like i mean go in depth with the risk how we can actually calculate and measure the risks and what are the type of risk analysis we have i mean uh, here um, 
these are like the tools is it for the hazard assessment to be but there is a tool for the risk analysis and how what types of tool actually we use for the risk analysis so everything will actually learn for the uh, next slide so until then uh, stay well and goodbye